I got vaccinated, and before I explain why, I want to emphasize that just because I eat a particular diet, take a supplement, or in this case get vaccinated, does not in any way mean that you should as well. This video is not sponsored, and I'm sharing my decision for transparency with you. I base my decisions off the latest clinical research, so let's have a look at that research. New Zealand is heading into winter, and I got both the influenza and COVID vaccines, as per the clinical guidelines here. But for me, just blindly following what the clinical guidelines say isn't what I do. Instead, I look at the research and make sure that the research matches what the clinical guidelines say and make sure that we're not missing anything. Starting with the influenza vaccine then, is it safe? I took the inactivated egg-based vaccine. It's manufactured by injecting the virus into fertilized chicken eggs and then incubated for several days to allow the virus to replicate. That fluid containing the virus is then harvested from the eggs and the virus is then chopped up into smaller pieces so it's inactivated, it's killed. So the vaccine is just chopped up parts of the virus. It cannot cause influenza itself. Regarding safety, the main side effects are a bit of pain or tenderness around the injection site and some people may notice redness. Other people may also get side effects such as headaches, muscle aches and fatigue. But the most significant side effect is anaphylaxis, which is a serious allergic response that usually comes on within minutes of receiving the vaccine. It occurs around once in a million influenza vaccine doses. Aside from that, some studies have found an association between Guillain-Barre syndrome and the influenza vaccine. It happens about one to two times per million doses of the vaccine given. But Guillain-Barre syndrome can also happen if you've been infected with the influenza virus. So the risks first benefits here, they roughly cancel each other out. Finally, according to a recent Cochrane review, there was no evidence between the influenza vaccine and other serious adverse events. For me then, those risk rates are well within my risk tolerance and I've taken the influenza vaccine every year since I started medical school all the way back in 2010. So why have I done this? Well, the World Health Organization strongly recommends that healthcare workers should get the influenza vaccine for two primary reasons. During the winter time, it is incredibly busy for frontline healthcare workers such as myself. We need to stay healthy so that we can treat our patients. We don't want to be taking sick days. So by using the influenza vaccine, we can reduce the chance of us needing to take that sick leave. The second reason is to reduce the spread of the influenza virus to vulnerable patients. In my work as a GP this winter, I'll see a lot of patients with the influenza virus. So if I can reduce the chance that I will get infected, I can therefore reduce the chance that I will spread that virus to my vulnerable patients. Because while 10% of adults will get the influenza virus each year, approximately half of those cases are asymptomatic. So healthcare workers can transmit the influenza virus without knowing that they are infected. That's a massive problem because at the clinic, I see incredibly vulnerable patients. I see infants, elderly, people with heart disease, chronic kidney disease, or COPD. I want to do everything that I can as a doctor to care for my patients. That includes keeping me healthy so that I don't need to take sick days and making sure that I'm not passing on the influenza virus to my vulnerable patients as well as my young family at home. Those two reasons are why the clinical guidelines say that healthcare workers have a duty of care to protect vulnerable patients from the serious health threat of the influenza illness. Studies demonstrate that the annual influenza vaccine for healthcare workers is likely to reduce illness among the patients they care for. Am I worried for my own health if I got the influenza virus? No, of course not. I'm a healthy 32-year-old. The risks for me are very small. What I don't want to do is take a couple of sick days to recover from the influenza virus. Those are days when I could be treating patients, and I don't want to unknowingly spread the influenza virus to my vulnerable patients. For example, among those over the age of 65, the flu kills around 31 people per 100,000 each year. But it may cause other significant problems, such as permanent lung scarring, damage to the kidney, and muscle wasting during recovery. If an older adult needs to rest in bed, they lose about 10% of their muscle mass over the course of 7 days. Obviously, I don't want that for my patients. So how effective is the influenza vaccine? Well, the effectiveness varies from year to year with the different strains, but from a Cochrane review, the influenza vaccine reduces the risk of infection by about 59%. And just to emphasize, the two primary reasons why I got the influenza vaccine is to reduce the chance that I would need to take sick leave and reduce the chance that I would get infected and therefore pass on the virus to vulnerable patients.
I'm also very comfortable with the risk profile. So what about for you? Well, as always, make sure to discuss with your own doctor. The CDC recommends that everyone over the age of six months should get the influenza vaccine every season, with rare exceptions. But you need to make your own decision. I am not here to try and convince you either way. I'm simply making this video for transparency so that you can understand why I've taken the influenza vaccine. Which brings us onto the next question. Why did I get the Omicron booster at the same time as the influenza vaccine. Well, my reasons to get the Omicron booster are broadly the same as why I got the influenza vaccine. I want to help protect my patients. I don't want to get unwell and need to take a couple of sick days, days that I could be helping my patients, and I don't want to unknowingly spread COVID to my vulnerable patients. So is this booster effective? Well, from a study in the United States, this particular booster reduces the chances of getting COVID by about 50%, up to four months of getting the booster. So how was that study done? These scientists tested patients in the emergency department, and what they could see is that the COVID booster seemed to reduce the chance of patients having COVID by about 51% during the first 7 to 59 days. That protection dropped to 39% during the 60 to 119 day period after the booster was given. So there is a benefit to my patients by me getting vaccinated. I'm less likely to get the COVID virus, therefore less likely to take sick days and less likely to unknowingly spread the COVID virus to them. What about safety? I used the mRNA Pfizer vaccine. That's the one that's available here in New Zealand. And let's spend a bit of time explaining how this vaccine works. In our cells, our DNA or instructions are stored in the nucleus. Think of it like a vault. And when new proteins need to be built, a copy of our DNA is created. And that copy is called messenger RNA or mRNA. That messenger RNA is then shipped out of the nucleus. It's a one-way trip. The messenger RNA is read by the protein building machinery in the cell and new proteins are created. The messenger RNA vaccines work by injecting this messenger code into the cell so that the cell can create a protein that the immune system can recognize as COVID. The messenger RNA doesn't get into the nucleus or vault where the DNA is stored. In terms of side effects, it's common to have a bit of pain or redness around the injection site. And just like the influenza vaccine, some people can feel fatigued, get a headache and have muscle pains. A more concerning side effect though is myocarditis, particularly for young males. There are about 40 cases of myocarditis per million doses given to young males aged between 12 and 29 years old. That number drops to 2.4 cases per million doses given to males aged over 30 years old. So the risks of myocarditis for me, given that I'm over the age of 30, is relatively small, but we have to make sure that the benefits outweigh the risks. Yes, I want to protect my patients, but equally I want to make sure that the benefits of this vaccine outweigh those risks for me personally as well. So for males aged between 12 and 29, per million doses of the COVID vaccine given, it's estimated that about 11,000 cases of COVID could be prevented, 560 hospitalizations prevented, 138 ICU admissions prevented, and six deaths due to COVID prevented. Those are the benefits against the risks of about 40 cases of myocarditis. For males in my age group, 4,400 hospitalizations and 1,200 ICU admissions reduced and 700 deaths prevented, compared to about three to four cases of myocarditis. For my health, I'm happy with that benefit to risk ratio. Other vaccines, such as AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, were associated with an increased chance of clots. However, a similar risk for the mRNA vaccines has not been seen. Overall, for me, those risks are well within my risk tolerance level. By getting vaccinated, I'm 50% less likely to get COVID and therefore less likely to pass it on to my patients and young family. I'm also less likely to need a couple of sick days, days that I could be helping to treat patients. When I posted the photo on YouTube and X of me getting vaccinated, I naively didn't anticipate the reaction it got. There's a lot of people online who care deeply about my health and about the decisions I'm making for my health. So I really appreciate the love and I'm so thankful for this community. Um, and I hadn't I hadn't thought that I was going to do this, but I'm going to go a bit off script. There's a lot of influencers who have got famous for being anti-vax, and there's one particular one that misrepresents studies and has got millions of followers. I'm not just going to be a sheep and follow what that particular influencer says or what other influencers say. I'm going to look at what the clinical guidelines say and what the research shows. 
I've had a look and I've made my own decision and I'm very happy with that decision. The primary reason why I'm getting these vaccinations is to help protect my patients. And again, looking at the research, I can quite clearly see that. So even though it might not be particularly popular, you know, reading the comment sections here, I must admit, I'm not looking forward to it um, if, the, <laughs> if the reaction to that photo is anything to go by. But again, I'm going to do what is right. And this reminds me of what I did with resveratrol and metformin for non-diabetics. It wasn't popular to talk against those things because, you know, certain influences were making this very popular. But I'm going to have a look at the research and make my own decision. And that's, again, exactly what I've done here. So I hope that you can appreciate what I've done in this video. And hopefully by watching it, you can understand where I'm coming from as to why I've taken these vaccines. And to emphasize again, just because I do a particular health strategy, in this case get vaccinated, does not in any way mean that you should as well. Make sure to discuss with your own doctor. But if you want to check out something that I am worried about, check out this next video here about microplastics.